Hey, this is Alan Mamatano with PC Perspective, and today we're going to talk to you for a few minutes about uh, Optane memory. So this is uh, not the P4800X, that big honking enterprise SSD full of uh, Intel crosspoint memory. This is just kind of a mini version of that. Um, there's only, on this 32 gigabyte part, there's only two crosspoint dies and two chip packages here sitting on there. And um, what this gives you the ability to do is if you have an Intel 7th generation core system, you need the, you know, there's a compatibility list on the Intel Optane site, um, and we have details in our article at PCPer, but you need basically a 7th generation Intel uh, chipset motherboard, um, CPU, has to be a core type CPU as we've come to learn, and, um, and pretty much as long as you've got that uh, level of a system, you're off to the races, you get one of these modules, you plug it in, uh, install the uh, Intel RST or the Optane memory driver, uh, either one works, uh, and you can just enable Intel Optane memory. And what this does for you is basically this part becomes a cache for your primary system storage. So uh, most people and most cases that this is meant for is if you have a hard drive in your system and you're currently dealing with uh, what you would normally see with a hard drive system, like painfully slow boot times compared to an SSD system. Um, pretty much the end result is uh, once things get cached, which takes like the first time you have run that thing, it becomes cached. Uh, from that point forward, you're pretty much running at SSD speeds um, for the most part. And uh, the way that you're able to, that this is able to accomplish this is that even though there's only two dies on this part, uh, the key to crosspoint is its access time, right? The latency is super low. It, it's about uh, one-tenth of the amount of time to request a piece of information off of Optane uh, versus any SSD that you're used to, like a NAND SSD, a SATA version, even NVMe version, still uh, Optane memory is able to access a piece of information in one-tenth of the amount of time. So uh, this particular part, uh, which I think is like 77 bucks for the 32 gig version, they make a 16 gig version with just one chip on it, um, that comes in at $44. Um, but the two chip version, the 32 gig version, the specs are nearly half of the performance of the enterprise part from Intel uh, that has way more dies on it and is a much beefier part. So up to uh, 240,000 IOPS um, and uh, a little bit over 1.3 gigabytes per second uh, read performance. The write performance is not so high, um, but the write performance is not meant to be a strength of this part. They're trying to keep your power consumption low. Notice that there's no uh, there's no heat sink or anything on this, and it's going to be installed in OEM systems that are not necessarily going to have, uh, you know, the level of cooling uh, that you, you know, your, your like power typical power user setup would have. Um, and also, your write performance is not critical so much in this because uh, you only need to write as fast as you can read from the thing that you're trying to cache. Um, so, in that respect, you know, write performance is, is more than adequate here. Um, Five-year warranty. Endurance rating is pretty crazy, 182 terabytes written, uh, even though this is only 32 gigabytes. So that's an awful lot of uh, complete overwrites of this amount of space. Um, and uh, you probably shouldn't have an issue uh, exceeding that within a five-year warranty. Um, this is only two lanes of PCI Express 3.0 um, for both capacities, 16 and 32 gig. Um, it, for what this is doing, it doesn't need a by 4 link. Uh, you're looking for la lower latency being the key, and absolute performance is not necessarily the, the, the critical factor here. It doesn't need to be able to saturate four lanes of, uh, of PCI Express. And again, a part like that would you know, need a little bit better uh, concessions on, on cooling and whatnot if they tried to, um, tried to accomplish that. Um, so we uh, got a system from Intel, looked like a typical... OEM style system build, what the target market is for, for this particular part. Um, I, ideally, you would be able to buy a system in the future uh, just right off the shelf at your Best Buy or whatnot, and it would just be a hard drive equipped system. You'd have like one terabyte or larger system drive in there, but you would also have Optane memory installed and like pre enabled just from the factory. Uh, you would basically just fire up the system, and for the most part, in all of our testing, uh, you would achieve SSD-like performance, like as if the your system drive was on an SSD, um, which is great, right? Um, you know, boot times, 
Uh, we saw boot times drop from 47 seconds for a hard drive equipped system down to six seconds. Uh, and that's talking like from when the post screen appeared to when we were at a Windows desktop and, and ready to go. So 47 down to six, pretty big improvement. Um, we did a bunch of other kind of testing. Uh, the, the most notable game launch time that we decided to test was the uh, Ashes of the Singularity Escalation uh, launch time, which is notoriously just horrible on, on hard disks. It takes over a minute on a, on a hard disk system. Um, drop that down to um, 18 seconds or so uh, with Optane enabled. And that's a launch that even if you had a SATA SSD, uh, we recorded that at 17 seconds. So you're getting within a second of you know, SATA SSD performance there, pretty good. Um, I did a bunch of uh, more power user level testing as well, just to see uh, if 32 gig of cache was enough to be able to have your games launch relatively quickly, have a quick boot time, but then also be able to do things like download and install VMware, download and install uh, the full Windows 10 ISO within, you know, make an installation within a VM of Windows, do all those things, reboot the system again, and the reboot time was still significantly faster than it would have been as if you were just trying to boot from the hard disk alone. So, um, you know, we were pretty aggressive trying to roll things off of the cache, trying to launch uh, multiple large games, like, you know, launch into Doom, for example. It's like a 70 gig install. Um, basically, uh, the what makes all that uh, um, possible and how you can, like, pass all of that information through the system and yet keep the important stuff that needs to be cached, cached, is that just the Optane memory driver is just being intelligent about what it chooses to cache. So if you only put the types of um, the types of data that are sitting in locations that the hard drive would have to randomly seek in order to find, you only put that stuff in the Optane and you leave the sequential type data, like you know the way Doom loads a level, for example, is more of a sequential uh, kind of activity. You can actually get away with keeping that on the hard disk. You don't have to put that in the Optane and shift other stuff out of Optane. So um, in our experience, in our testing, looked pretty, um, you know, pretty good. Uh, it was doing a pretty good job. Um, we didn't receive the 16 gig version to test, so we, we couldn't, uh, you know, be just as hard on half of the capacity of Optane and see if uh, we started to get, you know, more of a performance drop off as we did a bunch of different things. But uh, we'll just have to, you know, do that testing in the future. Um, we did a bunch of in-depth performance testing in the article. Um, I encourage you to uh, go and flip through that if you really really want to get in the weeds. I actually got to the point of running enterprise level uh, type of testing um, on this part, uh, either as a cache or just hitting the drive directly, and um, performed pretty dang well. Um, th that one tenth of the latency of a flash based SSD thing uh, holds just as true on this part as it does on uh, the P4800X, which uh, we reviewed last week. I encourage you to check out that review as well if you're interested. Um, but yeah, lat latencies across the board end up coming down to one tenth of the of the latencies of um, you know of any competing regular SSD that you and I are used to seeing and testing and using and whatnot. Um, it actually um, latencies actually came in even a little bit lower than Intel's enterprise version of this part. And if you get the 16 gig version, um, the latencies actually drop from a rating of nine microseconds down to a rating of seven microseconds. So basically you can shave a little bit more time off because the controller does not have to be as complicated and you don't need as many channels and you're not talking to as much as much of the, uh, the memory. So when it comes to latency, um, lower capacity actually uh, you know, gives you an improvement there, even further improvement. Um, we did our round of client performance testing. Uh, that's on our, our test system that we've developed over the past year. Um, saw significant improvements, um, specifically with random read performance and sequential read performance. So things that can, uh, the way that our suite works now is it puts files in place on the drive we're testing as if it was a consumer you know, doing things, putting files on a drive. Um, and our routines actually access within those files, be it some files are sequential, some files are random. Um, and those results came back, uh, you know, hard drive score of 136 versus adding Optane, that number jumps to 42,000. So, um, and that's in a case where a SATA SSD scored 15,000 in that test. So actually scoring higher in our semi-synthetic uh, style test for, 
you know, just weighing this Optane part over a hard disk. So pretty cool deal. I mean, you know, you get your large C drive. You don't have to worry about shuffling data around to different partitions, different drives or whatnot. Um, and, you know, you could theoretically put like an eight terabyte, you know, OS drive in the system, download all your Steam library. And I'm not going to say every game launch you do is going to run at Optane speed, but the second time you launch it within a, re you know, within recent history, it's going to be pretty quick. It's going to be SSD speeds. Um, we looked at power consumption and some other stuff in the article. Um, we're not sure what the power consumption picture will look like for a mobile installation of this yet. Uh, we'll have to see what that looks like. Um, as it stands right now, uh, it looks like the Optane driver is using a thing called polling. Again, read the article for more information there, but basically might give you some more CPU usage while the cache is being used. Um, and the idle power consumption we measured of Optane came in a little bit higher than idle power consumption of, say, something like a 960 Evo or just your typical NVMe SSD that you might be used to seeing. So, uh, you know, again, we'll have to test an actual mobile installation of this to see if that power consumption picture looks a little differently. Um, and I guess just, uh, you know, in conclusion, like for a, for a simple upgrade, uh, to a system. I guess the only real downside is you have to have been on the most recent generation of a system. So as far as, uh, you know, if this, if this technology could have been, you know, went back a few generations, it would be a no-brainer kind of stocking stuffer for any family member that still is using a hard drive system. Because it just, you know, plug the thing in, boot up, install the driver, enable the thing, and then you just don't touch it from that point, that point forward. It just hands off and it just gives you a pretty night and day performance boost over hard drive alone. Um, but again, you need the newest generation to be able to, to have proper support for that. Um, 44 bucks for 16 gig, 77 bucks for 32 gig. Uh, we've seen them appear and disappear from stock on Amazon over the past few days. Um, looks like uh, since, since this drive appears as a regular NVMe SSD, there are some people that you know, might be uh, wanting to use them for some other purposes as well because it's just it's a standard SSD. You don't need the most gen most recent generation of a system to be able to see the SSD. You just need it for the caching. So we actually plugged a pair of these into a Z170 board, uh, which does not technically support Optane memory as far as uh, caching. But we were able to put a couple of these into a RAID uh, using Intel RST and do we actually did testing of a 64 gigabyte a drive with you know made of pure Optane. Uh, you, if you had a motherboard that supported triple M.2 RAID, like we did a, a test uh, a few months back on with uh, some uh, 950 Pros from Samsung, um, you could theoretically have like almost a hundred gigabyte system SSD just made of pure Crosspoint. I don't know if you'd want to go that crazy. Um, the cost per gig comes in at around two dollars fifty cents. It's a lot higher than you could buy just a regular SATA SSD, but um, your, your latencies are going to be pretty dang low on a, on a system built, you know, with other, with much faster parts. Um, I gave it editor's choice. Looks pretty good to me, um, given the price. And uh, that cost per gig is actually half of what the enterprise version of it runs at. Um, not enough to use as an, in a client SSD, but there is a client version of the enterprise 375 gigabyte SSD uh, coming. Intel says it's coming towards the end of the year, so... We'll be keeping an eye out for that, but in the meantime, um, yeah, if you see uh, Optane memory enabled system at your Best Buy and it's not too much more than the hard drive only system, I'd say get the Optane memory one. And that's all I've got for this. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcperp.